Hi, this is Ian from MakeUseOf.com and today we have for you a headless Raspberry Pi installation. Now by headless, I mean that we are going to install the operating system onto the SD card and set up your internet credentials so the first time you turn on the Raspberry Pi, it will connect to the internet and you can SSH into it. This is great if you don't want to bother setting up a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor for your Raspberry Pi. We'll also set up a VNC server and viewer so you can see your Raspberry Pi desktop from another computer. This is quite a long tutorial, but you should be able to do it even if you're a beginner, so stick with it and let's get started. Using Linux for today's tutorial, if you don't use Linux, this is a perfect example to get to know it a little bit. Uh, you don't need to install it on your computer, just make yourself a Linux Live USB stick. You can head to the Make Use Of website to learn how to do that, or search the other videos on this channel. I made a video recently about how to do it. Once you've installed uh, Linux on your USB stick, boot it up into your computer and yeah, you don't need to actually install it. I'm running this off the USB stick right now. So now let's download our Raspberry Pi operating system. As with all operating systems on the Pi, you're going to need an SD card reader to burn the operating system onto your SD card with. And uh, this is the first choice you have in this tutorial. I will be downloading the full Raspberry and Stretch with desktop because one of the steps of this tutorial is to set up a VNC server. Now, if you're absolutely sure you're only ever going to want to SSH into it using the command line, you may as well get Raspbian Stretch Lite. Um, it doesn't have the desktop, and if you're never going to look at the desktop, what's the point in having it? Um, in my case, I'm going to download the Raspbian Stretch desktop. We're also going to need to burn the operating system onto an SD card, so uh, go to etcher.io and download it for Linux. Uh, you'll download a zip file, unzip that file, and install it onto your system. As well as unzipping and opening Etcher, you'll need to unzip the Raspbian Stretch file that you've just downloaded or torrented. Um, so what you're looking for is the Raspbian Stretch image. And when you have that, you can simply select that image file and then select your drive, which in this case is the 31.1 gigabyte SD card. Be a bit careful when you do this part. You really don't want to try and put it onto the wrong drive. You can really muck yourself up that way. And then when you're ready, click Flash. And this can take a while, so be prepared to sit back or go make a cup of tea or something like that. When Etcher is finished flashing the SD card, open up the file manager. And if you look on the left side just here, um, you'll see that we have root FS, and you're probably used to this. This is just a Raspberry Pi file system. But we also have the boot partition, and it's this that we will be modifying next. Next, from the context menu, open up a text editor. Now, we're not actually going to put anything in this document. We're simply just going to go straight to file and save as. Select this boot partition and name the document SSH. Now, it's important that it says all files down here. We don't want this to have a file extension. When it saves, we simply want there to be a new folder in the boot directory called SSH. Now that's done, we're ready to move on. Adding the SSH file at this stage to the boot partition just turns SSH on as soon as the Pi boots up. It means we don't have to go into the Raspberry Pi config menu. It's just another way of getting around not having to attach a screen or a mouse or a keyboard. To give it our Wi-Fi credentials straight from the get-go is a little bit more complicated though. Um, inside the boot partition here, we're gonna want to right-click and open a terminal window. This has the advantage of opening it in the right place where we want to actually add our new files. So the next thing we're going to do takes administrator permission. So we're gonna type sudo, we're gonna type nano because that is the name of the command line text editor. And the file we're gonna make is called wpa underscore supplicant dot conf. So once you type that in, press enter. Bear in mind that I will link under this video a text file with all of the different things that I put in here so you can copy them and paste them uh, if that's gonna be easier for you. And uh, once you're in here, um, again, I'm gonna copy this in. I will go through it slowly though so you can type it if you need to. Um, you need to give your country. Um, now, I'm not in France. I'm actually gonna say I'm in Great Britain because I'm British even though I'm living here in Germany and uh, update config equals one is something you can leave uh, alone. I'm just putting that in because that's what I was told to do. Again, control interface equals var slash run slash WPA underscore supplicant. This is just something that I know has to be there for it to work. Um, I'm not pretending that I know everything about this. Um, and under network, this is the part where um, obviously you need to add your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password. And where it says key management, it's most likely that you will be running a WPA or WPA2 router. So that's what you put here. You put WPA slash PSK. But if you are running a WEP router, instead you simply put uh, none here. So rather than WPA PSK, it would say none like that. So um, whichever way around you do it, you put all your details in as it is. And to save out of this, you uh, type control X 
and it will ask you at the bottom, do you want to save the modified buffer? Which is basically saying, do you want to save your changes? Type Y for yes and press enter to write that file name. So now if you were to type LS, you would see that there is a new file called WPA supplicants.conf and of course over here we can see that it is there too. Uh, all of the things that I just typed in there, like I said, I will link under the video. So if that was a little bit quick for you, check out that link and you'll be able to find all the bits you need and then start the video up again. So I went back into that file to put my actual credentials in and then I saved it, removed the SD card from this computer and plugged it into my Pi and booted it up. So uh, we've done everything we need to do with the SD card on the computer. We're now ready to SSH into our Pi. Now, rather than mess around with IP addresses or anything like that, we're going to use localhost. And the way you do that is type SSH and then Pi, which is the name of the user, at Raspberry Pi, which is the name of the Raspberry Pi. If you change either of those things, you'll need to change those two details, and then dot .local. And uh, on this version of Linux, it just works. Um, so you enter your password for your Pi, uh, which is Raspberry when you first get the operating system, but I'd change that if I was you to something a little more secure. And as you can see, we are now SSH'd into our Pi. If you find that this doesn't work for you, um, it probably means you're either using a version of Linux that doesn't already have this capability, or you're using a Windows computer. I know from the Mac terminal, SSHing straight in to find a local host works. Um, so if you are on a Linux distribution that doesn't support this, you need to install the Avahi daemon, let's say Avahi, um, and you can do that by saying sudo apt-get install avahi daemon. And uh, if you want more information on that, um, I will put this link in the description so you can read about it. Um, and if you are on Windows, you need to get the Bonjour print services for Windows uh, from Apple, uh, which again, uh, just allows window to, uh, Windows machines to access local hosts. Both of these links will be in the description, but uh, as I say, if you're uh, SSHing in from Linux, you'll probably find that it just works. So the very first thing we are going to do is update our Raspberry Pi. With that done, it's time to install a VNC server. Now, um, you may know from Raspberry Pi config that you can set VNC to be active uh, within the Raspberry Pi config menu. This is something that I have never done simply because I prefer tight VNC server. You don't have to use this, um, but it's free and I happen to think it is brilliant. So you get that simply by typing sudo apt-get install tight VNC server, all one word, and install it. Now, while that is installing in the background, um, the VNC server is what will serve up our desktop from the Raspberry Pi, but we need a way to see it. So um, from the Linux side, um, I quite like VNC Viewer. Um, if you are using Windows, there is actually a tight VNC Viewer. Um, that's what I use on my Windows computer. Um, but for today, I'm gonna download VNC Viewer from realvnc.com. And of course, I'll be downloading the Linux version. Once both of those things are installed, open up your new VNC viewer. Um, it'll ask you to agree to a user agreement um, and open up a terminal window. And we can start the tight VNC server by typing tight VNC server. The first time you do this, it will ask you for a password. This is the password that every time someone tries to VNC into your machine, they will need. Um, and it starts an instance of the tight VNC server at Raspberry Pi 1. So much like SSH, we are going to uh, use the local host again. You don't need the username this time. So this is just raspberry pi dot local. And that's not a dot. And uh, colon one, because as I say, it's instance number one. And when you press okay, it will say this is an unencrypted connection. I'm gonna say that's totally okay, because I'm at home. And there's our Raspberry Pi desktop. So I just entered the same password that I made when I started the tight VNC server, but that's it. That's everything that you need to do in order to have a completely headless setup for your Raspberry Pi. So there it is. Starting out with a Linux USB installation, making the SD card, modifying it, and then using SSH to install a VNC server on the Pi, all the while the Pi's just been sitting on the other side of the room and a keyboard, mouse, and screen have never needed to go near it. Now, um, I love making tutorials like this, and I hope this one helped you, but that's not the only thing we have on this YouTube channel. Uh, we have giveaways every week, we have reviews, and we have various tech tips. So um, if you're new here, do consider uh, subscribing to us, and also head to the main Make Use Of website where there is a wealth of information about technology. But for now, thank you all so much for watching. Cheers.